In this lesson, we'll be working on graphics, various types of animation, and again, a bit of control, interactive control, uh, using our keyboard keys to navigate our little character up here. I'm just going to hit the play button right now to demonstrate this completed file and show you what we are building towards. And then I can explain it a little bit and then we'll build one from scratch. So let me hit the play button up here. And what you see here is there is a little bit of gravity, if you will, applied to our little purple guy here. We have two kinds of animation. We have sort of 2D animation and what looks like 3D animation. And then we have uh, pattern brick walls that we're using here. And that's something I want to share with you as well as how to tile a pattern. Uh, this little plank is also tiled just uh, horizontally where this is tiled horizontally and vertically. So I do have some controls for my little guy here. If I hit the left arrow key, he walks to the left and you'll notice that he also animates. So we only have left and right. I don't have a jump in this particular exercise, but I'll drive him over to uh, absorb this rotating coin, if you will. And I've simply added a little noise as well to emphasize that. So if we walk over here, there he's eating the coin, if you will. Coin is no longer on the screen and we had a little feedback with the sound. So again, as I said, using a little gravity on the character and some left and right controls from the keyboard he does move around the screen, but he does tend to fall to the bottom. And at this point, he's trapped. Okay, if you want to build a jump uh, to get him out of there, by all means, go for it. But it's not a requirement in today's exercise. The main takeaway for today are three things. How to work with uh, tiled graphics. Um, how to create two kinds of animation. I'll just hit my refresh button here, my restart button. Uh, so that we can generate these static animation. Basically, something rotating on the screen and then how to apply animation that uses multi-framed animation uh, sequences output from another uh, another piece of software some 3d software gen uh, would generate this as static frames we bring it in to game salad and just reanimate those frames using a behavior okay so that's the outcome for today's lesson three spinning fans little guy that falls from the sky and does of course land so we do have some collisions set up with the platform areas with our purple guy and we have the other animation and a little bit of control on the screen okay so that's what we're going to build today i'm going to go back to the editor now and just roughly explain how this is built now we are currently on the pc version um, typically this course is done on a Mac and I, I hate to say this but the Mac version of the software is slightly better uh, when it comes to the tiling feature when you're looking at it in preview mode right now it's a little wonky uh, we're gonna base it on the pre-existing art that I'll show you in a little while but it you can see here it just looks crazy and I, I, again that doesn't happen on the Mac but for some reason on the PC it does that when we set it to tile okay uh, however on playback it does render out properly it's a little bit of a trick I guess to line it up but based on the dimensions of the bricks that I've created it should be pretty straightforward anyway okay so just one issue again with the tiling it does not uh, preview properly but it does render properly okay the same with this guy it looks much bigger than the original artwork and so on and again if I hit play you will see that it is sized much differently and does look appropriate here okay so that's the main thing uh, another small thing with animation that I'll talk about when we get to it which is a little less glamorous than the Mac version as well regardless there's always a workaround and that I think that's the main point to take away here there's always a way and it might be a little more crude or you might have to do it a little differently but at the end of the day it's the result that you want to achieve so we have no problem achieving the same results here on Mac or PC Okay, so I'm going to go through the different sections here. You can obviously see the big stage here. This is my backstage. Okay, so this is, um, these are all the actors inside of the library. And if I go down here to player standing, that's my guy right there. And all the backstage stuff attached to him is here. And again, I can show and hide the backstage that are associated with each actor. I can also move it around so that it can be on screen but I don't see as much of it here. Okay, so if I highlight that and then I go over to the attributes for the actor, I have various attributes for it, which we'll go through in the step-by-step. -step. And the same with the, the brick elements. 
Okay, so let me just show you all of these. So here's my plank, uh, the coin. Uh, let me show you the coin briefly and we'll get more in depth when we start to build. But if I highlight the coin here and I bring up the backstage, we have an animate behavior as you can see here. And I wish this expanded further out, but you can scroll through and see each one of these is a different frame. And I guess I'll explain now what my my beef is with the PC version here is that on the Mac I can reshuffle the order of these frames where on the PC I I can't drag and drop to reshuffle the order so you do need to put them in in sequence and that's something I can I will show you as well how to do that properly but it's a little more rigid in animate the animate behavior on the PC due to the inability to actually alter these once they are in that little window okay again we will work with it it will work it's just not as glamorous okay so i can hide that there as well okay so so let's uh, start a new file i do have all of the elements for you to download off my website so i think the first thing we'll do in the new file beyond establishing the ipad landscape stage size is to import all of our assets and then start to create some actors so i'm just going to start a new file now ipad landscape i would call this your last name and then the lesson is 05a okay click create project actually click resolution independence then create project Right away, do a save as. Save this file and then start to build it. So I'm gonna do that right now. Save as, I do have a folder for these guys. As soon as my window pops up here. And let's just go to my desktop where I kept all of these things. Mm -hmm. Game, sell it, exercises is my folder. Uh, I will create a new folder in here. Actually, I don't have to because it's a project folder, Never mind. Uh, we'll just use the same name last name actually put an underscore in here to keep my naming convention consistent and then the lesson number 05a so last name underscore 05a and save now we have something to build upon and from here on in i'll just hit Control s to update my saves okay so let's uh go over to our library tabs and check off media click on media and we'll add those assets as I'd mentioned there. So I'm going to start with the add asset button here. You can always hit the plus button there as well. And I have them on my desktop again. And I have a folder called, just find it here, Brick64 Images PC. So let me go in there. Now I have them subdivided into three folders. So we'll start with the bricks. And I do have other things other than the bricks, but uh, the three main bricks, they may look the same, but I'm going to point out the subtle differences shortly. And we'll need these to make end pieces and so on. Then I have the fan blade, the fan cover, and the little plank. So I can actually highlight all of those guys and click open. And you know what? Let me just click the plus sign here again. I noticed down here it said image files, but let me just check all media files. Okay, so that is everything that's in that folder. And we'll just go back a step here and we'll go into the coin frames. And you can see here there are 10 frames that were generated by another 3D piece of software. And we'll just grab all of those guys. Okay, now they are named sequentially 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and so on. So when we bring them into our animate panel, they should appear in order. Okay, so let's just click open here to bring those guys in and we'll keep going here so i've got all my coins let me go back here my player frames and again we've got our purple guy basically three sets of frames for animating um, we've got the falling down animation standing still left and right so let's just grab all of those let's just highlight like this there we go open that so we've got a lot of assets on this particular assignment okay all my little purple guys in their animated frames and then I have a sound asset as well and again if you don't see it just click over here and choose all media files to make sure you capture everything in the preview 
and it's called smb underscore coin and I believe it's a WAV file. All right, there it is. Now you can hit the preview button for your audio files. And it's that little pick up the coin sound, that little chime. Okay, I definitely want to save this. And then the next step would be to create some actors. So I think we'll start with the brick wall. Now, I can do this a couple of different ways, but you'll notice under info that all of my brick wall elements are 64 pixels by 64 pixels. So that's going to become important when we're sort of trying to line things up. Just keep that number in mind. You will need to apply some math to that. So I think I'll start with brick floor. And you can do a shortcut, like here is my list for actors and there are none in there yet. I could create an actor, then apply an image. But I can also drag an image straight to the stage and it will automatically generate an actor over here. So let's try that with the brick floor. All right, brick floor. And you can see there it comes in at its actual size, 64 by 64 pixels. And if I click away, you can see that it's, it's the beginning of a pattern. Now this had to be figured out in Photoshop and cut accordingly, but we have one brick width and two half widths. So if I was to expand this out when I set it to tile mode, it would just duplicate that and ultimately I get a seamless brick pattern, okay? Now let's go over now to our tab for the actors and open up the all tab and here's actor one which is the actor that got generated by dragging that asset to the state. So I'm going to rename it though. I'm going to call it brick wall. Okay. Or sorry, brick floor. I believe this one was called brick floor, not to confuse one from the other. Okay. So that's one. Now let's, let me just demonstrate a few things on this and then we'll add the other ones. Okay, so I'm looking down at my attributes. It is on actor currently and I can see the image of the brick. Now let me go down to size and just confirm. It's currently 64 by 64, but once I start stretching on the stage, this will reflect those changes. Now if I go down a bit further to graphics, Let's just scroll that down there. You can see tile width, 64 by 64. Now again, my one beef with the PC version is that once I set this to tile, this preview is going to get a little bit weird. And for some reason, and I don't know what it is, but it seems to resize it in the preview mode. Like if I hit play right now, it's exactly the same. Okay, back to editor. And let's just hide my backstage here. Okay. So let's go down. We are currently in the actor attributes under graphics. And if you look down here, we have horizontal wrap, vertical wrap. That's where we can change the uh, tiling feature. Right now it's on stretch, which means if I was to resize this, it would simply stretch what we're currently looking at. Whereas if I set it to tile, it'll just repeat as a pattern. So I can tile just vertically or horizontally, but let's change them both. You see we have stretch, fixed, and tile. Now let me explain fixed since we talked about the other two. Fixed means that I can expand the bounding box of the actor, but the image itself will stay its original size and it would, might look like it's floating inside of a bigger area as a result. But let's set this to tile, okay? And right away I can see something changed here. I'm gonna set this to tile as well. And let me just show you a preview of this to prove my point. You see here how it's displayed at its proper dimensions, where in the preview editor, it no longer is. So because I know it's 64 high by 64 wide, um, I'll do a quick demo and then I'll change the size. I'm just going to expand this out to a random shape. You can see it working here, right? You can see how that's pattern, you know, it's just filling in with a pattern. The only problem here is though the pattern is not represented as the right size relative to the screen. Like it's going to look a little smaller. The bricks will look smaller on the preview, which is the intended size. Okay. And you can see here, I'm kind of halfway into a brick as a result. Now, lucky for us, we're just going to go two bricks high, which happens to be 64 pixels high. So we're going to get away with this issue. Otherwise it'd be a little bit of trial and error, if you will back and forth until you get it nailed. Okay, so again, I'm gonna actually just lower this guy so I don't have to keep hiding it. 
And I'm going to delete this off the stage and just reintroduce it. So brick floor. Okay. So brick floor. Now if I go down to the attributes and open up graphics, let's just set it to tile. Oh, it, it actually stayed as tile. That's right. The prototype, which is the elements inside of the library, will retain these features. So I don't have to redo that. They are already set to tile. Now, knowing that the proper height is 64 and it's set, if I just stretch this out here, it looks, like I said, it looks a little bit odd here, like I'm cutting into the brick. But when I play it back, I do get that full X height, if you will. Okay. And we can just double check on the height and width right here, size. 64 high by 615 and that again will change. I could manually change it here to 800 as well, let's say. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually stretch that to the width of my stage and just eyeball it. Okay, and then just drag that to the bottom. Again, just by eye, just we're just going to go with a close enough kind of an approach here. There we go. Definitely want to save that. You notice when I clicked away to that the uh, attributes disappeared because it's no longer highlighted. So whatever is highlighted will have its attributes shown here. If I click on it here, we get it back. Okay, so let me just save my file. And let's talk about the other brick elements. Okay, I'm gonna go over to my library here, with my media. So brick floor is what we first introduced. I've got one called brick and, and one called brick wall. Let me go over to uh, Another piece of software here to show you these graphics up close. Here's brick floor. Now the subtle difference will be the white line on the edge of the brick. So brick floor, you'll notice, has no white line on the half bricks. And that allows for a seamless repeat of that pattern. If I go to brick wall, it's actually the opposite. It's closed up. So we're just going to expand these vertically. So this one will be straightforward, 64 pixels wide. Expand it vertically till it reaches the top of the screen. But the brick end is where we're going to do our staircase. And I only have one. I should have one for both sides. But what I'm going to propose we do is we can reuse this, duplicate the actor, and inside of our attributes, I can flip the image horizontally. So you'll notice here, this one has a closed white line over here but an open white line here. So if I was, you know, this one's not meant to be expanded horizontally. But we will just apply that or move it to the end of the brick floor and it should, you know, just line up because the height of the bricks are the same. Okay, so this one is just for the end pieces on that staircase, if you will. Okay, so those are the three graphics, the brick floor, and it is quite subtle, but I just want you to kind of wrap your head around this. If you're doing sort of complex patterns, you may need a couple of different elements to complete, you know, the, the edges, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Game Salad here. And let's apply, let's create a brick wall on the end. Again, it's coming in at 64 pixels wide. So I'm just going to line that up there. And it does not look proper right now. But let me just eyeball that in there. And under the attributes at the bottom here, I'm going to go into the graphics. And let's just stretch this uh, vertical tile. I could leave that stretch, but I will set it to tile as well. Okay, and just simply, again, trusting that the 64 pixel width is good with respect to my pattern. I can just drag that guy up there like that. Okay, let me just save that and do a quick preview. Okay, so I can see here that I need to move it up, but otherwise I think we're good. Oh, yes, here we go. I move that down, but there we go. I'll try that again, preview. And you can see here a little finessing, but I think, you know, we nailed it right there. And the, the bricks do match as far as the height of the brick goes. Okay, so there's that. Now, I c you know what? I think I'll just revise this a bit. Pull this guy over here. And pull this guy all the way down to the bottom. 
because I have that white line around the edge, which really does indicate the end piece, if you will. And just try to line those guys up there. And bring this guy down here a bit. All right, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, we're getting there. You can see, though, the little bits of refinement, right? So I'm just going to move this guy over a bit. You can nudge with your arrow key, so it's what I just did there now. So I'm just pushing it with my arrow key, because if it's quite close, you might want to go one pixel at a time, and the arrow key will move it one pixel at a time. So I'm just going to move that over to about there. And, oh, I see it centers from its, it resizes from its center, so let, that's why it moved out of position. Okay. Let's just grab that guy and put him down there. One more preview. And it's close. I just need to nudge it over. It looks like about a pixel or two. And I know it's a lot of, it's a lot of fussing around here. But sometimes perfection demands fussing around. And we'll keep going here. Oh, you know what? It needs to be stacked differently. Now, that's not something I anticipated here, but I will show you how to stack it. So that's what the issue is. If I put this in the front, I think we'll be able to get rid of that other line. These are my layers over here. And if I open that up, you can see Brick Floor Actor 1. Actually, that reminds me, I do need to rename that. But for now, I'm just going to drag that down, or I can drag this up and put that on top. Let me just see if that addresses it. It did. You see there how it's now not showing that little white line? Okay, so we're good there. But since I'm on the topic, let me rename this. Let me just go back to my things. I'll call it Brick Wall. Okay, now I can go back to my actors. I can do it in the layers too, probably, but I'll go back to my actors library and call it brick dash wall okay, I won't put the dash in I'll just keep it as brick wall okay there we go and again I'll save on my keyboard control s and we're good to go so now I want to create one of these for the other side so all we have to do really is copy this one and drag it over to here for the other wall because it is visually closed on both ends. So I'm just going to uh, alt click and drag and then just push that in there. Cross my fingers, hope it lined up. I will have to preview and I might need to finesse over a couple of tries. I can see there, I can see that line. So maybe I'll push this to the back in the stacking order. Actually, it's already in the back, I think. Let's go back here. To, I'll go to my layers here. Oh, here he is, yeah, on the layers. Um, we'll just push that to the back, at least behind the, f the floor, and take a look there. Okay, so maybe it needs to be nudged as well. Let me just nudge that with it highlighted. I can use my arrow keys. One, two, three, maybe, just to be sure. Hit my preview button. There we go. So we've addressed it. Uh, I'm not going to worry about this little bit of black at the end. We're just going to leave that. But we do have what looks like a contained area with two walls and a floor now. And again, that's a repeated background created by tiling our graphics. Some preparation needs to be done in Photoshop or another graphic program to make sure that your seamless features will work. And that's kind of another topic, another day, if you will. But with a bit of preparation, you can create beautiful, seamless backgrounds and create patterns based on very small pieces of art. Okay, so let's just go back here, and I'm going to save that now. And that's my layers, remember, not the actual actors. Okay, so that actor, the layer really tells you uh, what the instances on the stage are, so it gives you a reflection of every instance. And an instance can be many iterations of the same prototype dragged onto the stage. So if I drag that on four times, that would be four instances of the brick floor. And in my layers, I would see it defined as such. Okay, so just want to clarify that. The instance on the stage, you can have many instances of one prototype that you see in your library. Again, I think I saved, but let me just be sure here and save that. Okay, so let me just go back to my library objects here. Now we're going to create a little platform, if you will. 
the original one is basically like three steps, a little staircase, if you will. So I will be using the brick floor, and then I'll be using this one called Brick End. So let's just drag that out here to start Brick End. And Brick End, again, I'll show you here. I can go out here. Brick End is the one that has the white line on the one side. but not on the other. So that should, it's meant to attach to brick floor on either end, okay? So right now if I click away, you can see that the line is on the right side. So this would be going on the right side of the bottom of that pyramid, if you will. Let me just see what that looks like. Okay, so I could probably raise it up a pixel or two but let's just uh yeah raise it up one pixel there we go okay so i will uh now that i've dragged that directly from the library from my assets i will now go to my actors and rename it brick end now this is the one i will duplicate so that i can create another end piece for the left side I'll start by just dragging the brick wall, which is already set to tile. And I'll just try to line it up here. Now let me just double check. I'm sorry, not brick wall, brick floor. Let me delete that off the stage, my bad. Brick floor, more like it. Okay, and yeah, I can see now that you know the pictures don't line up because of that issue with the PC version but they do line up here beautifully. So I got lucky there, I guess. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double it mathematically in the width. So let's go into size. And you do need to select this on the stage to change the width. Double to 64. So let's try 128. That's two times 64. Hit my enter key. I will need to move this, I guess. To Align that. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so I'll just nudge it up one pixel. Maybe two. Let's try that. Okay, that's looking good with the nudge. So I'm just going to attach an end piece on the other side now. But I do need to duplicate it, flip the graphic, and then apply it to the stage. So I'm going to take brick end, hold my Alt key down, Drag it in here, and it makes brick end copy. So I'm just going to say brick end left. I guess I can do that as a name. And then down here, I will go to my graphics. See, why don't I drag that to the stage now and just show you what we will do with it. This way I can line it up as well. Okay, and I'll nudge it up a pixel. Click it once on the stage, nudge, review. Okay, and you can see it's it's got that line there, so I don't want that. I want that line on this side only. So I'm gonna flip it. So under graphics, we have flip horizontal. There we go, check, and let me just preview that. There you go, and you can see that white line has moved over to that side. So I'm going to do two more layers, if you'll do one with just one floor unit in between two ends, and then I'll put a brick wall for the top piece. But I should save this as I go. Okay, and this is probably going to be the most painstaking part of today's process, is building this wall and making it look seamless. So it will require a bit of patience because, again, my big beef with the PC version is it doesn't preview properly. So let's try, um, now I can duplicate this, but I think I'm better off just taking brick floor because I want it to be 64 pixels wide on this one. And we, I can duplicate these two pieces though, no problem. So I'll click and drag on the stage and then line these guys up here. Line this guy up over here. And this guy I'll duplicate as well. Alt click and drag on the stage and just position that accordingly and hope that I got it, but just quick preview. And what I would say is maybe nudge the middle piece down one pixel. 
So I highlight it on the stage, hit my down arrow key, preview it once again. And there we go. That's pretty good, I would say. All right. So again, we should save. Every time you achieve something, save it. Almost every other step, if you will. So the last one up here it will be just simply brick wall, which has the white lines on both ends. And I'll cap that off here, and it will create a little staircase along the left side of, of this element, if you will. This I can just leave as is. It's just the positioning I may need to refine now that it's there. I can go down one pixel. And I think we nailed it right there. Okay, so we're good. Let's just save that. And that's a big step. Now we've got all of our bricks in place. So the next thing I'll do is I'll put in the plank. Very similar process to this. Uh, but let me save this first. Save. Okay, so let's go back to our library assets and the plank. I'm just going to drag that out to the stage to start with. And just resize this guy. Actually, I won't resize it yet. I will set it to tile horizontally under graphics okay uh, horizontal wrap tile now for the vertical I'm going to set it to fixed so that it will not repeat on the vertical and it will hold its true size vertical wrap fixed okay I obviously need to uh, move this over and strange change the size but let's just see what it looks like here okay there we go now interestingly that still looks big so let me just uh, go over here and drag this guy over and I guess I'll move it down a bit to align with the brick I'm gonna try something here I'm trying my different keys here to see if it can expand without expanding from its center point. It seems a little funky, but I'll just go with that and reposition it there. Now make sure, it, it, if it has to be higher or lower than the brick, it should be higher because when our little purple guy comes off, if this is sitting up by pixel, it will collide and it will not be able to pass that point. Let me just see what this looks like now. I don't want to fuss too much over it. I'm, you know what, I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, it's good, it works, it looks nice, and so on. If you wanted to reduce the size, you could go back in here and under tile height, you could change that, right? But I'm just going to leave it as is, all right? We're good to go on this. And let me just hit preview one more time. So now I've got a contained area. This is kind of enclosed, nothing can enter here. But when our purple guy drops from the sky, he will land on the wooden plank. And if we want to move him, he can go left and right. Okay, so let's just uh, end this section here. And the next section we'll do the animated elements as well as our character and then apply some control over the character such as the gravity and the left and right controls from the keyboard. So I'm just going to go back to the editor, make sure I save this and continue from here.